then let us move on to the next uh, this uh, topic and that is breast milk the first feed of the neonate and that is the breast milk so let us look at the physiology of the breast milk production we know there are two kind of hormones involved in this one is prolactin other is oxytocin what is the difference prolactin is secreted by the anterior pituitary and it is responsible for the milk secretion reflex what is meant by milk secretion is it acts on the the gland surrounding the the, the cells the snr cells like surrounding the which are on the periphery of the alveolar glands and then it acts on them and causes them it is responsible for the secretion of the milk into the uh, lumen of the gland right and very importantly you should know about prolactin is that during night it is very you know prolactin levels are high so breastfeeding during night is very important for maintenance of the prolactin reflex remember this very important then let us move on to the oxytocin that is the oxytocin reflex so oxytocin reflex you know is produced by the posterior pituitary it is responsible for milk ejection we know this then it causes ejection of milk from the glands into the lactiferous sinus so that means whatever milk has now come into the lumen of the glands has to be taken to the lactiferous sinuses and that those lactiferous sinuses are located under the areola so the baby would you know press the areola and take out this milk so that is what is oxytocin reflex all about please remember this is one reflex which is affected by the mother's emotion you should know this so the mother has gone to take a bath and hears the child crying is thinking about the child and you know the milk would start coming out of her breasts so this kind of reflex is affected by the mother's emotion right then uh, let us come to the initiation of breastfeeding we should know that breastfeeding should be initiated within an hour of birth and exclusive breastfeeding should be practiced for at least first six months of life after that the child needs much much more than the simple breast milk and that is why then complementary feeding that means other than breast milk breast milk has to be continued breastfeeding has to be continued but other than that the child's caloric and the nutrient requirements they increase exponentially so other than that many other things are required and that is what is known as complementary feeding right then express breast milk this is asked in your exam you should know that it can be stored at room temperature for 6 to 8 hours and in refrigeration for 24 hours and in a deep freezer at minus 20 degree centigrade for 3 months altogether people do it right so we should know these uh, hours this has to be memorized room temperature again i am revising 6 to 8 hours right then uh, refrigeration 24 hours and of course the freezer is minus 20 degree centigrade for three months right okay then uh, let us come to the different types of breast milk you know that the first uh, milk that comes out as, as soon as the child is born is called the colostrum so we'll just write it down over here the first thing which comes out the is the colostrum and you know it is a yellow kind of uh, thick yellow milk and it is usually secreted in the first three days after delivery and you should know it is rich in antibodies it should not be thrown uh, it should not be thrown so there are uh, rich in antibodies i'll write write it down for you and it is rich in vitamin a d e k right all kind of fat soluble vitamins and this kind of milk has more proteins and more growth factors so more proteins and more growth factors right okay then what else is after three days what do we get to see is another kind of another type of milk which is known as the transitional milk so this is basically a milk which is somewhere between the, the colostrum and the uh, and the mature milk right so this is secreted after 3 to 4 days because you know colostrum is secreted for the first 2 to 3 days of life so after first 2 to 3 days of life or after 3 days of life on fourth day onwards we get to see secretion of the transitional milk and this secretion of transitional milk continues for around 2 weeks before it is replaced by mature milk what happens in this so in the coming 2 weeks what will happen slowly and slowly the immunoglobulin and the protein content will now decrease right and what increases is the fat and the carbohydrate content 
so fat and the carbohydrate content of the breast milk increases uh, immunoglobulins and the protein content gradually uh, decreases so carbohydrate content i am referring to lactose or sucrose what uh, lactose is present that is the main carbohydrate so that increases right then let us come to the another kind of milk and that is uh, mature milk that is the milk which is then you know to be secreted in the coming uh, weeks of life for uh, for the entire period of the breastfeeding so this is known as the mature milk so mature milk you should know is of two types four milk and hind milk so mature milk when the baby takes in mature um, uh, breastfeeding and is feeding on mature milk then the initial part of feed that what comes to uh, inside what enters inside his mouth is nothing but uh, the, uh four milk and the later on the after five seven minutes the milk that comes is the hind milk so what is the difference but first few things about the mature milk so mature milk you know it follows the transitional milk and it is much thinner and watery you should know this the colostrum if you remember was thick and yellow because it had lots of you know uh, immunoglobulins and proteins but now this is thinner and watery but the good part is this is this is amrit this is the most important trend and most uh, very very useful uh, kind of feed for the child has to be given even if it is grossly watery it contains all the nutrients now dividing it into two types the mature milk has you know the hind uh, the four milk and the hind milk so four milk you know the four milk is it it satisfies the thirst of the child so that means it is watery it is rich in proteins it is rich, rich in sugar vitamins minerals so it is most likely it quenches the thirst of the child while the hind milk contains it hind milk has more of the fat content and it satisfies the baby's hunger so you can imagine how do you remember it close your eyes and think so when we sit down to eat first of all we are drinking water we are very very thirsty so we drink water so that is why the four milk is more watery contains all everything except the fat remember fat comes later on so the four milk will contain sugar also vitamins also minerals also proteins also and it's sat and obviously a high proportion of water and it satisfies the baby's quenches the baby's thirst while the hind milk will satisfy the baby's hunger because it is uh, you know it is rich in fat that is why it is advised that whenever you advise anyone for breastfeeding please tell the mother to breastfeed at one go for at least 15 to 20 minutes because if she'll be changing the breast let us say in five minutes seven minutes then she will be just giving four milk to the child and no wonder such a child is cranky is not satisfied will be crying most of the time and what translates into the mother is that my milk is not enough chalo let us start the formula feed so that should not be there that should not be the uh, case so it is advised that uh, uh, breastfeeding should be continued from one breast for at least 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 minutes as the case may be depending on the uh, content on the uh, amount of the breast milk right okay then uh, let us move on to another kind of milk and that is the preterm milk so uh, milk which is secreted which is secreted by the mothers you know uh, at the when they when the babies are born preterm is known as the preterm milk so this kind of milk has uh, more of please remember uh, there are certain things which are more in preterm milk and they are asked in your exam so i made a mnemonic for you for the preterm milk if i write down over here so do you remember there was this rage sensation internet sensation psi do you remember this p s I. So, Sai was there. He is a Korean singer and he is very famous for his video called the Gang, Gangnam Dance, right? And a very peculiar dance step and very peppy number. So, what I have made for you is I, I, C, Sai. So, what I stands for? So, these are what this mnemonic is for that the preterm milk contains more of these I, C, Sai. So, what is I, C, Sai? It contains more, more of iron, right? iron is there now you will say the breast milk does not contain it contains iron although of a lesser content but definitely as compared to uh, the mature milk it contains more iron but otherwise you should know breast milk is a poor source of iron right so it contains iron then what else it contains more is calories for c for calories 
P for proteins, S for sodium, and I again for immunoglobulin. So I'll write it down for you. I, I C C is calories. So it is more calorie dense. Then uh, P P is for proteins. Psi S is for sodium, right? So S is for sodium. And I again is for immunoglobulins, right? So I C Psi, this you should remember. I C Psi. I used to like the singer, so that is why you know this just came to my mind. So this is how we remember S is for sodium, of course. This you have to remember, it's not for sugar, it is for sodium, right? So these are the peculiarities of uh, preterm milk, right? Okay, so here we have that the preterm milk contains more of immunoglobulins, calories, protein, sodium, iron. I'll just write it down again. I C psi. Right. I C psi. Okay. 